I understand why fad diets are popular. You know, cabbage soup diet or um, ultra low carb or, you know, whatever it is, the, the diet of the month or 500 calorie diets, which are kind of popular right now. The reason they're popular is because people try to do what they've been told you're supposed to do. Eat less, eat more fruit, eat more vegetables, cut your portions down, but then they're starving, craving sugars and starches, and not losing weight. That's the key. If you did all that but you lost weight, that would be something, but it often doesn't happen. So people go to fad diets because it's so frustrating. So what is really the best diet for weight loss? And I will argue that there is not one best diet. You know, our patients are all different. And today we're talking purely about the menopause metabolism and not some of the other conditions that I see in my practice. But I find that the menopause metabolism is so common and insulin resistance is so common that it responds very, very well to a very uh, simplified type of diet that I use in my practice with good results. But the macronutrients, which I mean the protein, the carbohydrate, and fat, really needs to be adjusted to each person based upon what's going on in their lives, with their medical history, but also based upon their lab work. Somebody who has mild elevations of glucose or insulin will be able to tolerate maybe more carbohydrate than somebody who has higher elevations of glucose and insulin and things like that. So really customizing helps a lot. In terms of the diet for insulin resistance, the key is adequate lean protein. And this is important. Adequate lean protein does not mean unlimited protein. And we're gonna talk a little bit more specifically what I mean by my protein requirements. It's a controlled carbohydrate diet, which does not mean a no carb diet. A lot of people have been on really, really low carb diets. And if you have a breath mint, you're out of ketosis and all is lost. And indeed, that's not true. You can have certainly healthy carbohydrates in your diet, but they have to be the right amount throughout the day and the right amount at each meal based upon what's happening in your chemistry. And when I was growing up and when I was a teenager in the 80s, you know, fat was the enemy, that fat was bad, avoid fat at all costs. But we know differently now that healthy fats are actually good for us. They can be calorie dense, but they are an important part of a healthy diet and an important part of a diet for weight loss.